you'd like to contact the show, send us an email at liveonfourlegspodcast at gmail.com or follow us on any of our social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, at Live on Four Legs Podcast, and on Twitter, at Live on Four Legs Pod. Hola, Costa Rica! Nuestra banda tiene 20 años. Pero, pero, aún somos jóvenes. No sé por qué no hemos venido nunca a Costa Rica. Pero estamos muy felices de estar aquí y ahora. Dejamos lo mejor para lo último. And away we go. You're listening to Live on Four Legs, the live Pearl Jam podcast experience featuring... Mr. Stone Gossett. Fucking camera in the truck. Everybody now, welcome to Live on Four Legs, a definitive live Pearl Jam podcast. And whether you're tuning in for the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, on and on and on, however many times that you've tuned in, you could have tuned in 108 times for all we know. Welcome back. And for those who don't know, tuning in for the first time, we are a Pearl Jam podcast that focuses primarily on their live catalog. So one week, like last week, we went and did, we did Argentina from 2013. This week, we're doing Costa Rica from 2011. Next week, we're doing Mexico from 2003. The week after that, we're doing Toronto from 2016. You never know what venue or era you're going to get with this show. We like to spread the darts around as much as possible and uh, give you as much of Pearl Jam's live goodness that there is. So, Randy Sobel over here, John Farrar over there. Hello. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, sir. Yeah, very, very low-key. You know, we, we didn't do the big family get-together, obviously, so we uh, we had some, some virtual family get-together, which was nice because you can just, oh, we, we lost your connection there. Sorry about that. <laughs> exactly. we, that that would, as a bummer, we'll, we'll catch you. We'll catch you at Christmas, but uh, right. No, no, it was good. You know, had a lot of fun. A- ate too much, so it's uh, they still got that going for us. But yeah, this is uh, how was yours? You had uh, you did the whole thing, right? Same thing. I, yeah, same thing. We went and saw my parents and uh, everybody else. We have a pretty large, intimate family. Like you know, from me and my cousins and you know their kids and stuff like that. So usually, Thanksgiving has about. Oh, 25, 26 people or so. So we don't do Thanksgiving normally at my parents. It's usually like based near, you know, my parents' house or like, you know, on Friday or Saturday, everybody, that's where everybody comes to hang out. Uh, But we don't do Thanksgiving dinner ever at the house anymore. We usually, we go out to eat at like three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So it's, uh, this was the first home cooked Thanksgiving that I've had and maybe, six or seven years it's been it it had been a while okay 
So yeah, it was nice to get my mom stuffing again and, and, uh, you know, get all, all the Thanksgiving goodness. But, uh, you know, I think one of those Thanksgivings in there, I think I had steak one year. That that's just not right. You know, yeah, you, you just yeah. can't, you got to go traditional, but, uh, yeah, good. And it was great to see my parents and, and very quiet, very quiet, uh, as opposed to, uh, previous Thanksgivings. And, uh, this show that we're doing today happened to be a couple of days before Thanksgiving because the day that the Mexico show happened, there was a Mexico City show that happened four days after this. That was Thanksgiving Day, and I made a terrible error uh, back in 2018. This was before you were uh, a part of this show and and just a a listener and subscriber, but uh, I said to Matt, like, Hey, why don't we do a Thanksgiving show? Why don't we do a show where, you know, they played on Thanksgiving? Let let's find the show. And and that I think Mexico I remember this. Yeah. Yeah, that Mexico City show ended up being the only show that they ever played on Thanksgiving Day. So I said, "Okay, great. Let's go find it." And problem was, I looked around everywhere. 2011, I looked for the bootlegs on pearljam.com. I'm like, "This is this doesn't exist. Why does this not exist?" It's a Mexico City show. This seems pretty important. Uh, you know, lo and behold, the bootleg does not exist in the lore of Pearl Jam. There was an accident. Uh, I don't remember the full story with it, but there was an accident with the bootleg where they did not mass produce it. And it's not the only one from that tour because we're right. talking 2011 right. here. We all know what's missing from 2011. Um, but it is, it's, it's not available. So we listened to an audience recording that was less than, than pleasing, uh, and, and very early on in doing this, we're like, we can listen to an audience recording you and I right now, and we'll be able to knock it out of the park. But like that early on, that was our 10th or 11th episode, whatever it was, it was, uh, Mm -hmm. it was rough. Yeah. It was either right before or right after you guys did Atlanta and I was on that first time. Yeah, that sounds about yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. cuz I think Atlanta was episode number 10. Uh, mm-hmm. This is me. This is me geeking out on live on four legs history <laughs> here. I I did not intend for that to happen today, but yeah, it was it was very very early on and we have we have learned our lesson. Make sure there is a good bootleg and uh, thankfully there was a good bootleg for the show. Yeah, but also like the around the world series is quickly coming to an end. Like we're we're done with South America. This is yeah. the only Central America show they've ever done, and then mm-hmm. we're going to be in North America, and that's going to be it. Yeah, and you know Mexico and Canada. That 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 that's all we got left. Like yep. we can't really consider the U.S. as being around the world because you know in between all of these shows we've done Wrigley and uh, you know all of the. Uh, vote for choice shows that we've done and everything like like yeah america is they're what 70 80 percent of the shows that they've done have been in the u.s so yeah. you can't you can't make a full trip and 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 still say america is involved with it but it's it's been very interesting and i think this is this is going to be an interesting one to talk about because like a few of those other ones that we've done they've never returned to Costa Rica. So it was one of those things where they had to sort of figure, figure it out on the fly and figure out what kind of crowd they were going to have throughout this whole time. It seemed like they were trying to figure out this show as they went along. I think they had a good time, but I don't think it's an accident that they haven't been back to Costa Rica. Yeah. It's a little strange and we'll, we'll get into it. There's, it's a little like something is off at this show. It seemed to me like, you know, and not just compared to, you know, the great shows we, we did in Chile and Argentina and Brazil. Like those are it's, all fantastic. You can't it's compare just, those. Yeah. It's just, it's just different. Like something is, something is off. And we, you know, you, you read and you see, like you hear like the stadium was not full. Like it, it wasn't sold out. So it, yeah, just a little strange. The crowd reaction to some of the songs is strange, which we'll talk about. So uh, yeah, I think we should, uh, we should get into it. Yeah, and and it, it's it's really difficult, I think, for any show in this position to come off of the show that we did last week. That was unlike any other Pearl Jam show that that I've ever heard, and I, I'm gonna guess that you're in the same category there. Yeah. Uh, like that's that's an all timer, Buenos Aires, and Absolutely. anytime. 
Absolutely. anytime you get anything from Buenos Aires. So it's 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 tough, and and we're gonna do our best to to really pick out some of the shining moments that did happen from this one. But um, look, I think Costa Rica was on there because Ed wanted to go surfing. Like that's absolutely he yeah, yeah. he mentioned at the very end. I would we're gonna I'm gonna skip ahead. We'll come back to it. But I think the one of the very last things he says even yep. after the last song is like, oh, we'll we'll, we'll see you on the waves tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. And and there are four like as I mentioned before, there are four days in between mm-hmm. this and the last show of the tour, which was in Mexico City, which yep. means Costa Rica. Spend a couple of days here. Spend a little bit of time here. That's that's Ed just getting his vacation. So, um, all right. I guess uh, we'll just kick right into it. You know, 2011 was kind of right in between the backspacer stuff. Uh, you know, uh, 2009 and 2010 were really the main backspacer years. But this was following up on PJ20 and some uh, Canadian tour dates that they did. Probably about 10. Canada dates spread throughout, you know, Ontario and Quebec and uh, going into Alberta and uh, BC a little bit. But uh, then they, they went down and did about 10 dates in scattered all throughout South America from Peru to, to Brazil to Argentina. And and that's pretty much, you know, it it, it was a slow year, but it seemed like there was a lot going on at once. There was, yeah, twenty that that fall twenty eleven. You know, like you said, it kicked off with PJ twenty. Those two nights, it was so good, and it was it was almost strange of them to have that be the beginning. It almost seemed like that should have been maybe the end of it, and have that be mm-hmm. like the celebration. But they just went off after PJ twenty, and like, and they didn't really do a big American tour. Like it would have been great. Like we got, like obviously we got Atlanta and and Florida, you know, in 2012, which was, which was nice well. for what we get. But yeah, the, the, a couple of festivals. But yeah, it was, it was weird that they didn't do a full 2011 tour in in the yeah. U.S. Yeah, uh, look, I think all credit goes to Canada for for getting those dates yeah. and and deservedly so. But you know that that probably goes into a lot of how the Lightning Bolt tour was manufactured and and played out because how many dates did you get in just October and November? Like they had to kind of take a week or two in between because there was so much packaged together from double nights in Philly and Brooklyn and Worcester uh, to other places like Los Angeles and a couple of, others that they had on uh the west coast tour so like there, there was a lot going on there was a lot going on but you know this is kind of the precursor to all that still folks focusing on backspace or still kind of fixating on the album which it's i think at this point if i remember correctly being at pj20 i think most people were pretty over that album by that point oh i was i was over it as soon as i <laughs> the last song finished no, I'm being yeah a little harsh but yeah, yeah it, didn't, it didn't really have a long shelf life with a lot of fans, I think. Right, and it just kind of felt like the more backspacer songs that were in the set meant more bathroom breaks, meant more that people weren't – people didn't attach themselves to these yet. And a couple just, of these – It doesn't have those emotional, like, t- touch point moments that a lot of their albums do. It just doesn't have them. And it One should – One or two, maybe. Yeah, like just breathe and unthought known and amongst mm-hmm. the waves should be those moments for that. But I, some people just kind of see them as filler, and uh, I guess we can kind of get into all that because most of those songs that we just mentioned are in the show today. So let's just jump into what they did at San Jose, Costa Rica, in 2011. <laughs> we 
they opened the show with two Versus songs. And what do you know, they are the top two tracks on the album, Go and Animal, to open up the show in a place that you've never played before, a crowd that you're not familiar with. I think this is a really good way, and, and, and judging by some of the other set lists that they did on this little leg here, Go is starting to be utilized more in the lead-off spot. Um, if, if you've seen most of these set lists, the only song that is considered the slow the slow burn start would be released that's the only one that they played in the beginning so their mentality during this is okay let's let's hit the crowd pretty hard and let's let's get them going let's get a wild crowd during this oh yeah it's it's great like it there's you know they, they do it kind of a almost like a cold open like there's there's no you know little intro there's no warm-up and no talking it's just down it's, oh it hits you right in the face this is a great opener i love it Love when they do go. And like you said, for a place you never played, crowd that might not be as familiar with the new stuff, yeah, hit them with a couple old songs and you, you get everybody going right away. This is this is fantastic. And yeah, the, the the slow open, you know, the pendulum would come in in 2013 and that that's kind of become, you know, the standard for what we got from then until now. But yeah, they weren't doing that here. They didn't have a pendulum to go to. So yeah, this, this go and animal uh, one-two punch at the beginning is great. A lot of the memories from this night that followed on the fan views afterwards were that go into Animal were definitely highlights for people, especially if you have to think most of this show is 10 and verses. And you have to be thinking because that crowd, that's what they're going to attach themselves to. They need the popular stuff. You hit them with the first two album songs from verses and, and you got to hook them right away. And I think, I think it pretty much worked. However, there is something that went down during Animal that we found on YouTube. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so if you, if you look it up, there's a, it's what's called a mini riot during Animal. And it, it looks like what happened to us. So this is a large, like, soccer stadium. And Estadio Nacional. Correct. And it, it looks like they've got, like, the, the bleachers, like, higher up or kind of separated from the floor area. So what happens was it looks like someone tried to rush through to the floor. Now, you know, you, we assume that like it's separated by like you needed a wristband to get on the floor or something. There was some sort of some sort of gate, you know, that you needed to, to be able to get through to get on the floor. So a couple of kids decide they're just going to bust through. Security gets a hold of them, you know, takes care of business as they are uh, prone to do. And then well, more kids start running through the, the gates and then more kids and the, the security's you know, you see a couple of them in the yellow shirts trying to grab kids and, like, you know, doing, like, bend them over like they're going to handcuff, like, their police and, like, tackled one kid. And, like, eventually it just turns into people just sprinting through these gates. It be, just becomes a free-for-all. And, and like we said, you know, the stadium is not full. So, and this is far away from where the band is playing. So they obviously have, have no idea what's going on. But it's, like, it starts at the end of Animal and continues, like, through the beginning of Corduroy. I think some some fans were just like, "Oh fuck this, we're we're getting up there," so they just made a run for it, and a, and a lot of them made it. Yeah, a couple unlucky ones, and it's unfortunate because that's just kind of like, okay, everybody's doing the same exact thing, but we got to make an example of one person that was slow enough to be caught, you know, which is just stupid. Either let everybody in, or make sure your security force is strong enough to let nobody in, but. Um, yeah, it, it, I'm glad things didn't escalate and get worse because we've seen worse happen. Uh, we have seen riots at Pearl Jam shows before. You just don't want to wake up the next day and be like, um, you know, there were some people arrested and there were some people uh, that were kicked out of a Pearl Jam show because then, you know, that's not what they're about. That's then, not yeah, what that, that's the headline, our base right? is then about. It's like trouble yeah. at Pearl Jam show, right? Right, and and you know that the band is 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 always going to be worried about that, and always going to be mindful of that. Yeah, I think the the security was smart enough to realize that they were beaten, so I think they eventually right. were just like, yeah, we we like you said, we don't have the manpower to stop all of this, so yeah, we're just gonna make an attempt to to act like we care. But yeah, a lot of kids got through with with no problem. Oh yeah, it was there was a stampede, there was mm -hmm. herd coming through. Yeah, no issues at all. And uh, like you mentioned, it was Animal going right into Corduroy. 
Um, Corduroy is, is, I mean, like, this is obviously a fan favorite with this crowd. It's a fan favorite with another crowd, but, you know, this is, this is a brand new crowd. So, of course, you want to bust out one of the popular songs very, very early on. And, and Ed is doing, like, some shrieks. He's got this, like, madman kind of shriek to him going on. And, uh, it's starting to kind of rile the crowd up a little bit. Um, you know, it doesn't really come yet, but Ed has a weird voice night on the at this show. I thought that his voice was not, it broke a lot, and I think he was, after however many dates it was down there, I, I think that this was a moment where you could say, okay, he was he was kind of shocked at, at the show. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Um, I, but, like, as far as Corduroy goes, I got I got nothing else to say about Corduroy. This is exactly... Yeah, you, you do get the piece, which is a a throwback to the Atlanta show we did a couple weeks ago where uh, that was kind of the beginning of that, possibly. So he does throw that in, which is nice. But, I mean, the show had so much potential at the beginning. Go into Animal and Corduroy. I mean, you cannot ask for anything better than that to start a show. And it just it just seems to lose momentum after that. Yeah, I fully agree. I fully agree. This is the point already at song number four where it's just, it feels like a miss. And song number four, five, and six. I'm just going to go all three of these. It's Unthought Known into Comatose into Elderly Woman. Three songs that have no business being near each other in a set list, let alone near the top of a set list. Like, Unthought Known had opened a couple of those shows, and I'm cool with that. I think that is a pretty unique opener, and it's a way to get your crowd into it. But you had those songs. It's kind of, you know, in this set list, if you want to say, like, this could have followed daughter or you are near the end of the main set then it would have worked mm -hmm. but you had with, all of those with, building songs with fixer and deep are weird in the middle of the set like move those yeah. up to the top where they, where they oh the fixer go could and, have been a yeah yeah really good top just a, four just a strange sure. thing and again we we give ed all the credit for making these set lists and he is the master he knows obviously but you know hindsight's twenty twenty. we can look back and say you know at the time maybe he thought that you know, mixing in a couple of the 2000 songs here would be a good idea, you know, just in case you, you don't get many of them aside from Backspacer. So mix them in. And like you said, it, it's that wave, right? You Corduroy breaks the wave and then you, you try to build it back up with Unthought and Comatose and Small Town. Yeah, and sometimes, I just don't know where the wave a, is going with this. It, yeah, yeah, sometimes it breaks and sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah, just a, I, yeah. Just a very strange set. As listening to this, you're like, Comatose comes on, you're like, okay... Especially because he's talking yeah, before yes. Comatose. That doesn't, yeah. that definitely doesn't work. Comatose is best utilized when you have like a really slow or soft, like mid tempo kind of song. And this is your wake up moment. Like right. you already know your crowd is into this already. You need, like, dare I say, you need a got some around this area. You need something that is kind of filler, keep you going until you are ready to address the crowd. And, and these were just, they weren't there. They 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 mm -hmm. don't work for this. Yeah, yeah. And usually, you know, small town is is such a good crowd moment, and we talked about that. And I think even after that, I think the the two songs after Comatose, Small Town and and Given to Fly, I think they lose a little bit being sandwiched in the middle of this. Mm -hmm. They they didn't have the usual like crowd moment kind of punch that they usually have. Right. Yeah. And especially because. And it, like I mentioned before, Ed addresses the crowd before comatose. If if you're going to at least do that, at least split up the fast paced three minute punk song and the, the sing alongs, you know, at least mm -hmm. split those up, give the crowd a chance to catch their breath instead of like comatose in the small town. Just, I don't know. I, I it, there, there was something amiss there. I, the crowd the crowd was good on small town. I'm not going to, I'm not going to blame the crowd for, for it. And we get a, you know, Ed loves to sing uh, whenever there's a new place. We finally saw this place and uh, a nod to me in Costa Rica for the first time. Place. We finally see this place. No one's ever taken me. moments that could have been better with better construction building to these moments 100 and, and you mentioned the, the speech he, he says in spanish 
He says, hello, Costa Rica. Our band is 20 years old, but we're still young. I don't know why we've never come to Costa Rica, but we're very happy to be here. We left the best for last. So that's a nice thing for those, you know, the yeah. people here in their own language. That's cool. Sure. And yeah, but like, you know, maybe save that for after comatose leading into yeah. small town. That that makes more sense to me. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, as I said. Exactly, exactly. All right. So that I think we kind of established the first six. We can get into the given a fly fixer deep section here. I yeah. What do you what do you want to talk about in this section? I, I, it, it was it was just kind of bleh. Like yeah. given to fly didn't really do anything for me. And that's a song that I love. Like absolutely. I thought it was one okay. Of my, one of my favorites. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It's okay. Given to fly is usually better than okay. It's usually great. Yeah. I mean, especially. I, let's not make the comparisons. That's not fair. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. You you follow up on it with. A song that has definitely run its course at this point. Like the fixer, I don't know. It it seemed like the crowd wasn't into it, and by this point, it's just it's been played seventy seven times in the in a span of two years. Like it's tired. They they were pushing it. Yeah, it it hasn't. What it's been played probably ten times since this. Uh, actually nineteen. Yeah. So like they they knew not much. Yeah. It's, it's funny because we don't actually ever get to talk about the fixer, so maybe we should take a second to at least talk a little bit about it. I, th- I think you just did. That we thought we talked about it for a second. <laughs> you don't want to talk about it. I mean, I, well, I was just, I was gonna mention okay. I, was, I was I was gonna bring up that I liked it when it first came out. Mm. I was a fan of it back in 2009. Mm-hmm. I, I I know probably it doesn't seem like the song befitting of your taste. But I think it's just it's just one that just doesn't fit who they are really. It has it has no edge to it. It has no emotion behind it. It's like it's it's just a filler song. I think it's I don't have any connection to it at all. It's probably it's probably in my bottom ten Pearl Jam songs to be honest. And also I think another you know this is a more emergence of Dad era. You know Ed is is the main compliment in all this. He wrote over half of, of Backspacer's music, and I think all of the lyrics, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and most of the, these songs are kind of, like, about his family and about, like, you know, the world he's leaving behind. And, and you know, he's just turned into a different person at this point. And he'll mention that later in, in the show. He'll, he'll say, you know, he, they've been on tour for a while and it's been weird not being able to hold his wife's hand. So, you know... I think I think 2011 was ukulele songs too, right? So he's been true. He's yeah. been working on that. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, it's it's still there's ev- evolution is is continuous and it always keeps going on and on and on. And uh, you know, 2011 is no different. But um, all right, that that was our fixer conversation. I think we did it. We uh, <sighs> whether for better or for worse. Um, I, we do have to mention because we brought it up last week. Deep is kind of on a streak here because in all of the South America, Central America shows that we've done, it's been on four out of the five of these shows. And we kind of touched up on it a little bit last week. Why do they play this one? They're just playing everything off 10 this night. Anything that's off 10. They're just like, okay, just throw it in the set. Yeah. And I'll, I'll come back to this later, but yeah, if you love, 10 and Backspacer, if those are like your two favorite albums, then you will dig this show. Sure. Uh, that's, you know, it's not, it's not my taste, but you know, there's gotta be somebody out there that, that really feels that. There are. So, Absolutely. Yep. Um, Jeremy and the supersonic, uh, right in the nine to 10 spot. Jeremy, usually in the situations, the song that is the follow up to deep and, uh, it just feels like really, you know, the whole main set felt like they went through it in about 40 minutes or so. Yeah. I don't know how accurate that is, but it, it went by pretty fast. It did. Yeah. Not a lot of extended things. I mean, we'll get we'll get to one. But I think this is where the show starts to pick up, I think, a little more of my interest. I started to, to pay a little more attention. Like, okay. Because you, you hear Jeremy and you think, okay, that, that that's going to be a nice crowd version, you know, after – after Fixer and Deep, which kind of fell flat. Like, I think, you know, Jeremy's going to pick him back up. So, I'm okay, I'm, I'm paying attention. And it was it was fine. 
And then Supersonic, you're like, okay. Like, again, a, a rare song, not one they, they were playing a lot. And it, it Mike does something interesting with the solo, which is, you know, at least worth mentioning. Supersonic is not one we get to talk about on the pod too much because we just we don't really go back to this era. And like you said, it's only been played seven times since this show. So that's like nine years and they've only played it seven more times. It's, that shows how the band really feels about the song. And one of them was in Atlanta, so that doesn't even count. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you're, you're the one that said it. because, yeah. uh, But I don't know. I... I, I I really don't have – it's one of those Backspacer songs that just kind of feels like – I know you like it a little bit more than I do, but I, I just kind of feel it's just yeah. filler. A it's it's bit. a Ramones homage the same way that Mind Your Manners is a Dead Kennedys homage. And, yeah. you know, it's 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 just there. It's just them wanting to do a, a Ramones song. That's it. Pretty much. Yep. Moving right along. Even flow spot here a little bit deeper than you would get even flow. It's a little bit closer to the end of the main set. Uh, but this is kind of Costa Rica's introduction to Mike. It feels like Mike doesn't have a lot of big moments like his usual moments in Corduroy. And uh, like you mentioned, Supersonic, he had a moment. Um, That's a really uh, – let, let's not skip over that. That's a really good point because – yeah, like that may be why a lot of this main set fell flat because it didn't have those mic moments in the middle right. like, it, like it normally does. That's a really good point. Yeah, I think there's that is maybe why it wasn't really resonating with me because you you don't have those moments where he just goes off. Like usually you get three or four of them in the in a main set by now, but this one this is the first one. Yeah, and even given a fly, which is mm-hmm. is essentially a full full mic moment, it just. Because Given a Fly didn't have that presence, like you were saying, it was just okay. It doesn't it doesn't stand out in that aspect. But you you hit on Even Flow, and it's really I feel like it was almost too late at that point. Where you know maybe if you had it a couple songs before either Deep or Jeremy, like mm-hmm. maybe you get the crowd really riled up and 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 back into it. But here it's like you're you're nearing the end already. And yeah, you know how many times on the show do we talk about like. Oh, Mike, Mike, again, Mike on this one. Oh, right. my God, Mike. And this this show, I mean, Go, obviously, is, is a standout for him, but that was song number one. We're at right. song number 12 right now, and we're just now mentioning him again, and that's that's very strange. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's – they're able to feel this magic with, with this version of Even Flow. I'm, you're able to kind of feel it, but I think the crowd was kind of – they were almost taking away that opportunity to get a good Mike show. Yeah. He does get a couple of other moments, like his obvious moments. Black is an obvious moment for him. There are going to be other moments in the show where he's going to shine just fine. But I think you want more than just a small handful. Like, usually you can come out of shows counting on both hands, oh, right. saying how many right. Mike, sh- Mike moments. You can't. You can count on one hand the best moments of Mike's in the show, which is unfortunate. Um, you get You Are is really probably outside of backspacer songs that they don't play like supersonic anymore is you are their rarest song maybe maybe oceans later yeah those are the two mm-hmm. I, I thought it was great it and, was you know, yeah Absolutely. guitar pedals are working yeah. so when the guitar pedal guitar pedals work you get the song in motion and um you know i just i guess one thing to bring up about just the crowd in, in general is that maybe it made sense that that this was more of a 10 set because it felt like some of these lower end songs like you are that are kind of deeper that i think we love as as being on the show but you know maybe it just it doesn't connect as much to to the crowd down there right yeah i mean they you never know like that's the thing we 
we would know if they if they had a history there and the band would know like if they they can draw on those those previous experiences but they don't have that here so they're just right they're just kind of throwing darts at the at the wall to see what sticks just winging it yeah, yeah. i wonder if they if they had a second night here if they yeah, had back to back nights yeah what what would would have they done on night two would it have been a more maybe rare some show no code, some binaural in there yeah yeah, yeah at least like one or two maybe they kind of take a reset from the show and figure okay well, what worked for that crowd, what didn't? I, I think that there would be a lot of second place from the show. And oh, and, and Ed's so good at that. He's, you know, he after the show, he was. I had to think there's part of him that was like, some of that was missed opportunity. Right. Yeah. Because he yeah. he obviously knows. He, he, However, he's so good I, at reading these crowds. I don't. I, I think that the end of the set here, that we're getting into now, I think is probably like you, you mentioned. This is the strongest part of the set list. Daughter going into Why Go. Uh, sounds great. I, you know, I think this is a transition that uh, that worked really well in the way that they did it. It was kind of in the same, not in the same fashion, so to speak, as as a Lucan into Not for You. But you keep that continuous drum beat and you keep that going, and it kind of developed in the way that the crowd went along with it, doing the whoa, oh, 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 oh. It, it, it kind of felt natural that. You started off why go like that. I thought it was a really, really cool moment. Yeah, this is the the first moment that made me sit up and take notice since since go. And I want to mention too, like a great Red Rain tag, Peter Gabriel and Daughter, sure. which is rare. You, great song. Like I, I, I think love, they only I love Peter twice. Gabriel. I love yeah, I love Red Rain. So that was really cool to hear.
granddaughter, which leads into like straight into Why Go. I thought it was great. Like, why haven't we heard this before? I thought it was right. it was done really well. Yeah, I, and you know, it's it's funny because I I don't remember the last time we've covered Why Go on the show. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, it feels weird because a lot of these South America shows, you would think Why Go would be it's a good chanting song, it's good, it's a good jumping around song, mm-hmm. but. We've also, been doing a lot of 2000 and 2003, 2003. And it was not in these settings. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a great penultimate main set ender. Um, and it, it, again, with, with these songs in, in this spot, like you're not getting a better man in this spot. You're not getting longer songs. So it, it feels like it's a very much a condensed and compressed main set that, that feels like it's at least 45 minutes. Yeah, just 16 songs, so... Right. Yeah, sure. Rearview Mirror closes it out, and um, how'd you feel about this Rearview Mirror? What, what do you got going on in this? Um, It was, it was. I mean, ho-hum. Ugh, another great <laughs> Rearview Mirror. I mean, how many how many do we have to talk about? It's Oh, it's great. Like, some melodic stuff going in there. I really liked what Mike was doing. I was, you know, I'm giving him a mention there. It, it was really good. I, I enjoyed it, as always. With this, like, open road, majestic sound. A little bit. A little bit, very open air atmosphere. It was a little um, bit driving, a little bit of driving kind of rhythm to it. Yeah, I, I, I thought that though, and I was hearing it in my right ear, which is usually an indicator that this is Stone kind of going off. I thought that was mostly Stone doing that little, like, yeah, like all that kind of stuff. I, I yeah, I, they were it, they were going together. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then like Matt gets a little bit of a, a drum section in there too, where they kind of lay off a little bit and let him do a couple fills and um and yeah like it kind of i guess at the end i think it kind of lost its grind a little bit i don't know what it was you know how this song it just it feels like at the end it's kind of like all right let's get the sprint we're we're at the end of the finish line let's 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 sprint to the end It, it needed to breathe some life into it to to get to the end there i thought it was a little bit sluggish getting to the end it didn't have that grind that i like out of the river mirror again yeah with preview mirror and you know you the, the the purpose that that bridge serves is to build up the tension right and to to build up the the you know potential energy if you will like so that it can be released and pushed back at you at that big cathartic explosion at the end right when it kicks back in that's the moment right that you wait for that's why they build that up and let it build and let it build and let it build so that that moment is, is that much better. And this one, it, yeah, that, that moment wasn't as good as it normally is. Yeah. Yep. But look, that and that's just kind of the little things when you're listening to, you know, and, and dissecting one boot like a week, and especially most of them are going to have a mirror in it. Like those are the little things that you listen for. And those are the little things that we want to share with you that kind of, you know, you weed out the good ones and you make sure you remember the good ones and remember not saying that this was a bad one or anything like that, but you want to the cream rising up to the top as they say. Right. Right. So, yeah. Uh, all right. We're at the first encore here, which means let's stop to take a little bit of a Patreon break. And, uh, we have a couple other things to promote as well, but first we'll ask you Head on over to our Patreon if you're interested in contributing to the show. That's patreon.com slash live on four legs. Uh, this has been, it usually ends up this week where we just have like more episodes than not, just all kind of plopping in on one week. Monday we released our Bridge School Night 2 of 2003 episode with uh, old Dick Cheney and uh, a really good Masters of War and a great long road with uh, Neil Young on on the organ. So there's some good moments in that. And uh, tomorrow, John, why don't you tell them what we got going on tomorrow? Yeah, if you guys have been keeping up with our Evolution series, we've got another evolution episode coming up for you guys where we're gonna we're gonna take a song and track it throughout the years and you guys voted on this one and you voted for release so you're uh we're gonna get to hear us uh talk about release through the years 
Yep, and uh, it'll it'll go in all different directions. You know, I think in most of these episodes we kind of talk about how the evolution with like the drummer's evolution, and you know, with little sections that they bring into it. I think Rearview Mirror and Immortality were both really good examples of that, where we kind of broke down where where Mike shined, where Stone shined, and and all the 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 key players. But this is this is focusing on the evolution of emotions and how big venues really elicited this song to to make for either the biggest moment in the show or the emotional moment that the fan would have in these that you can remember from seeing it at Wrigley for the first time or uh, a great version with the thunderstorm going on at Bonner Springs or Verona in Italy like those are the ones that we're going to pay attention to and I think we uh, I think we we nailed most of that aspect I would say so. Yeah, I mean, this set we're talking about today could have used could have used a release as something sure. for people to grab onto and in in a little more of an emotional moment that that people could really dive into and really connect with. It. This this set needed more of that. So yeah, yeah it's uh, we could have used a release here, especially uh, in this first encore that we're about to get to. But we will tomorrow. We will release release, and it is our eleventh of the evolution episode. So if you want to head over to Patreon. Get the Evolution episode, get the Bridge School stuff, get all the extra stuff that we have from, you know, getting to pick your own show for us to cover on an episode. That's pretty important to be involved with our set list drafts. That's a pretty cool extra thing. Uh, am I missing anything? We can send masks and stickers. And I think uh, we uh, we have a new patron that we need to thank this we week, right? do, yes. Thank you to Craig Smith for joining in. Thanks, Craig. Thank you, Craig. Hope yeah. Hope you're enjoying some of that content over there. Definitely, definitely. Get in touch and uh, let us know what what you're what you're what you're liking right now and uh, what you're interested in. So, yeah, it's basically it kind of all comes down to the community that we're building and it helps us build our uh, little Discord community that we're doing as well. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun over there. Yep. But uh, if if you are interested in joining our Discord chats, just get in touch with either of us and, uh, you know, live on four legs podcast at gmail.com. That's probably the easiest way outside of Twitter, Facebook, whatever uh, social media handles that you want to use. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's the best way to kind of be in touch with us, communicate with us, communicate with other fans in the, in the community. We're trying to do more bootleg uh, uh, sharing. And last week we did the uh, Buenos Aires show before we aired it. So that was a lot of fun. We had a lot of participation in that. So if you're interested in joining up on our Discord, hit us up. Also on December 17th is going to be the holiday party. Don't forget and right now is going to be the time where it's pretty much cut off. This is the deadline. If you need to buy your gift, buy it right now so we can get them shipped and get them out to people. Pretty important that everybody gets their gift uh, in and safely before the date. And uh, hopefully that all happens. And, and even if you didn't join the gift exchange, everybody is invited to this. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a cover band uh, come in, Matt. Uh, you guys remember Matt, right? He's going to come in and uh, they're going to do a bunch of songs and we're going to just kind of exchange stories, exchange gifts, and it's it's going to be a good time. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Hope yep. we get to see a lot of you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, this is what it's all about. Just kind of bringing the community together for uh, for cool little things and celebrating the that we all enjoy and have the same passions. So that's pretty important. All right, let's jump back into the set list. The crowd is chanting for Eddie as uh, he addresses them in English. And this is the part we kind of alluded to before. He saw a couple holding hands when they were coming in and uh, mentions that he hasn't held his wife's hand in a few weeks and misses that. And uh, there's a lot of power behind a couple holding hands. And this is really, this is the moment that you get out of the backspacer era that feels like, you know, it's, it's newer and it feels like a sort of a sign of Pearl Jam that you really didn't see from the 90s and early 2000s. They're starting to write love songs now. Well, it's, yeah, it's uh, it's a maturity in, in songwriting that we hadn't seen up to this point. You know, there's a little bit of it on, on Avocado that they were starting to get that phase. But yeah, they're, they're in their 40s at this point, you know, so they're they're not going to be writing those same, you know, songs that you got from verses and vitalogy they're not that same band so and yeah you I mean you can draw a line through just breathe to sirens and yeah 
it's it's a whole is. yeah absolutely absolutely and even if you want to start it you said on avocado mm-hmm. parachutes would be the one mm-hmm. parachutes come back inside job yeah i think this that was kind of the the defining thing of this of that kind of mid 2000s early 2010s era where the the songwriting was starting to mature in a way that you know a lot of fans weren't into you know a lot of people were like yeah no i'm i'm good I'll, i'll stick with my old stuff but you know the people you know who were sort of my age you know in our 40s in our starting to get in our late 30s early 40s yeah you 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 feel like yeah you they're growing up with you but it for the younger fans, I can see where, like, yeah, you're kind of losing me a little bit. This isn't this isn't the same band, but that that's who they are. You know, you, that's that's what they're gonna write about. And and people love Just Breathe, like you said, it's a it's a song that people connect to, still. And this is a, a good version with just Ed and Boom. Uh, I always always like the versions when when Jeff does that nice little bass line. But yeah, I thought the the holding hands thing was uh, was very sweet and like yeah, it was a, it was a nice moment. Yeah, I'm going to add that in as kind of one of the other frustrations that fans might have, that I, at least that I've heard uh, from before from older fans, and that's, you know, the, the, the Ed, the spotlight being on Ed and not the band moment, and Just Breathe is one of the few that kind of give you the sense that, okay, Ed is, is just taking the stage by himself, and I'm okay with it. I've never had a problem with it, but I think people... Are kind of you know I, I, some people might think that he's almost playing the the role of being more important than than hmm. guys, and I think maybe it's that that you know could be the reason why they're not as connected to a just breathe or or the end would be another one right. where it just doesn't right. you know it, it, it's basically it and that's it. And I think too that might just be a function of too the the band's getting older you know they're in like i said they're in their 40s at this point you they just played for you know almost an hour and a half and yeah you need they might need a little bit longer of a break to just relax and get back into it so sure yeah and i don't think that there's anything you know sinister it's not ed trying to take over it's just him going all right you guys take a little bit more of a break sit down and, and we'll kick back into it when when you guys come back out you know i got this after just breathe you get we mentioned it before you don't get a real lot of rare moments at this show but you do get oceans in the encore Hold on to the song that i need to complete 10 so i was you know i was in definitely just jumping for joy at that moment um and especially because once the opener hits you kind of you kind of in your head when you're thinking all right what can they do for the encore you're sort of taking all right did they open with long road okay you can take wash you can take release you can take oceans you can take sometimes you can take all these songs out of the equation because they're not going to do it later so when you get oceans in the spot, it feels like it's more, it's more of a surprise, and it's more of a, uh, it, it, it becomes unexpected. Yeah, and it's great. And I, I got it to open in Columbia in 2016, and yeah, just to open the show to get oceans, you're just like, whoa, like this is, this changes everything. Like all bets are off for tonight. You know, that's kind of what it becomes as an opener. But yeah, in an encore, and again, it's a, it's a nice. I think it's a nice compliment to Just Breathe, where it's Just Breathe is like kind of more of the hit. Like Oceans is like a little more of a deep cut. I think they pair well together. I, I yeah. wish they would have gone back to this a little more in the later years. Yeah, I can see that. That's a really good point. Um, but also, it's ten man, the ten songs. Yeah. Oh you yeah. Get, 
eight out of the 11, yeah. 10 songs, the ones no. that you don't get, one's a surprise. Like, how are they not playing Porch at a, at a Greatest Hits show? Right. And then, like you mentioned before, re- Release not being played, and, and Garden is the only other one. So, yeah, yeah. no yeah. no Binaural, no, no, no Code. Uh, the next song that you get is one of two from Yield, and and it's just it's very by the book. And if you if you want to call it safe, you can call it safe. But you know, for this kind of setting, it does work. So let's uh, let's kind of segue into you know getting out of this uh, slow burn to to start off the encore, and you're getting back to back songs. Do the evolution state of love and trust, and yeah, I don't want to make the comparisons to the other shows that we've done from because they're it's not the same region it's central america south not america they're yeah. completely different places so don't go into this evolution expecting there to be this crowd just blurting out the the walls part they're not doing that and mm-hmm. i think i might have gone into it with that expectation thinking that you know, maybe maybe it was just me, and maybe it's the tour, and you know, from you know, this being sort of the end of all that, maybe maybe I thought that 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 was going to be part of it, but it just wasn't. Yeah, that's that's a good point too, because I think you might be hitting on something that maybe the band was feeling. Like coming into this, they might be thinking like, oh, okay, we'll put Evolution here, and it'll be a huge, right, big crowd thing, and we'll get everybody back, and it'll we'll just be we'll just be able to coast to the end and it'll be fucking great, right? And I think you can almost hear it in Ed's voice when he comes back for that last part where he, it, again, it just kind of falls flat a little bit. Like, he changes the lyric to, like, admire Stone mm-hmm. where, like, you, he's he's almost probably reaching to the band, like, alright, we, we, we he's probably looking at Stone when he says it, like, I'm not getting anything from the crowd, so you guys gotta pick it up. You know, it's I, I get the feeling that he kind of, like, wanted was expecting that big evolution moment and it it never came right yeah and like we said you can't go into this and maybe it was because they were on such a high with it you know they got to be playing it every single night if i do the math correctly uh out of i think was 10 shows on this little leg they played it nine out of ten so it makes perfect sense that most of those shows you're gonna get pretty rocking versions of evolution and and to come out of this and not feel that same way it's just it's a little unfortunate but also you know maybe in the future they get a little bit of a redo and maybe the crowd gets a little bit of a redo too if they ever go back there maybe the crowd's like you know what we kind of surrounded ourselves with a show in, in Chile and shows in Brazil and shows in, in Peru and um, you know maybe we didn't step it up and maybe the next time they come we gotta step it up so maybe, maybe it's a little bit of that and, and, and shout out to Peru we're not we're not gonna cover them on this around the world no we'll, unfortunately we'll get to you at some point Peru we haven't forgotten would, about you yeah I would I would love to get to Peru at some point and there there were other countries in, in Europe like Turkey mm-hmm. and Greece, Greece that I think we, didn't we missed do. yeah yeah uh, we didn't do everything but we came pretty damn close right so you know there's there's so many shows that you just can wanted do to in give a them a little shout out yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And, uh, Evolution and State of Love and Trust, it kind of, you know, it bridges that gap between kind of an emotional oceans going into an emotional black. I thought State of Love and Trust was, was fine and uh, kind of doing its job and its role here. It's, you know, it's always good to get another early era song in, you know, this whole kind of ending section is all 90s stuff, except for Just Breathe. Like mm-hmm. it's all stuff from the nineties. So people are going to recognize it. People are going to, are going to react to it. And then you can really get the big crowd moment. Uh, and two of them back to back with, with black and better man at the end of the encore. Yeah. And, and state of love and trust, you, you know, I think the word you use, it's fine. And it's like, you, you, you don't want a workman like, you know, going through the motions version of state of love and trust. Like that should be, that should be, tearing the roof off the place but yeah again it just felt kind of flat i think maybe after evolution maybe they they kind of they kind of lost some of the momentum that they had and again black is is nice but it's it's very subdued compared to some of the blacks and i you know i've been talking about it every week where we've been on this roll of like huge moment of black huge solo in black amazing you know version of black and this was more like it was it was more like it just uh just okay like it it, it didn't have the 
the standout McCready solo to it. It was it was a little more a little more reined in than we normally get. I think. Yeah, I can see that. I I, I like this version okay, and I, I thought it was fine. I thought out of this show, it's one of the standout moments because you know outside of maybe a couple things in the main set there really weren't a lot of things that kind of made this unique so you know getting the solo from, from black is still a special moment getting to hear the crowd sing along and do the to do do do's they're still doing that it, it's again it's not like other crowds and you can't compare them to other crowds but you still get those little things that that you like out of black and then better man afterwards but you just don't get them to this maximum capacity that you've heard before and felt before. Yeah, it wasn't that it wasn't that explosive, like furious. Not I don't mean furious as in like breakneck speed, like just furious as in the power behind it. It just didn't have that digging into behind it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that. And you know, it doesn't it doesn't say that the song was a bad moment at all. It doesn't say that the right. song was was lackluster. It just, you know, it, there's such a high bar that you have to clear with some of these and like we mentioned before with Rear Mirror, you, you gotta weed out some of the best ones and, and kind of cream rot rises up to the top so um, what'd you think of Better Man? Because I thought that you know as 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 this show went I thought that Better Man was, was one of the highlights because uh, you know again the crowd participation in this you don't hear a lot of the crowd but they're singing along on Better Man and Eddie's giving yeah. them the platform yeah yeah, I mean, a, a, a good crowd moment. Not not nearly enough of them in this one, but this is one. And yeah, the, the save it for later is very good. And yeah, it was it was great. But it, it it's supposed to be great, right? You expect yeah. that. Like this is yeah. this is Arena Rock here. This is Arena Rock 101. And and yeah, from a crowd that probably doesn't get a lot of rock shows like this, it might seem so much different, and it might have so much more of a special feel. Like I didn't feel that the band wasn't energized at all i didn't feel that the band wasn't in a good mood i don't know if you felt that way it was hard to tell when, when you don't get a video of the full show it, it's hard to tell mm -hmm. yeah i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to speculate i think some of those moments where ed voice was cracking i think he was trying mm -hmm. i think yeah. that you yeah. know he was putting his effort yeah. in so yeah. uh but you know some sometimes they just don't translate as well if you're not at the show or don't have those memories but right. I, I i can see people in that crowd in costa rica you know from you know probably not getting a lot of bands that are pearl jam's caliber probably thinking hey this is this is pretty cool so hey some of those kids them. were running through that gate trying to get up front so they it's, were into it yeah exactly so you have to yeah you have to give them a little bit of credit uh but that kind of takes us into the second of our encores and Ed is doing his all hello to everybody in the front, hello to everybody in the back, on the sides. He thanks the crowd for their energy and says because they never played there before, it's, uh, you know, asks for their blessing to continue playing. And the crowd says, yeah, sure, why not? And uh, for that, they get Last Kiss. And, you know, I learned, I learned a very valuable lesson this past week. What's that? I, I was nice to this song. You were. I was. I was nice to this song, and I included it because we all love inclusion. Mm -hmm. I included it on my set list because I thought, <laughs> hey, coming out of Encore Two, this would work. I had River Cross to open up the the second Encore, and thought that Last Kiss being sort of the, uh, you know, the contrasting, uh, you know, polar opposite of that. I thought that it could have worked nice together, but. You guys didn't necessarily agree because you guys voted Ooh. on the set list, and I think yours for, is the, yours is probably the worst performing set list draft set we've ever had. I it was not good. Guess. It was not yeah. good, and, and many people singled out Last Kiss as the reason they would not vote for yours. That's exactly it, and unfortunately, people aren't looking at these as you know, just hey, wow, they this really flows well, or you know, they really utilizing that song in that spot that was really smart like they're just like oh last kiss is in the set no screw that like and hey i included it on my bridge school set list draft because that's the place to. for it that's where it's, that's where it has its moment yeah right that's where it's most powerful that's where it hits the hardest right but in, in a setting like this i mean yes it's their you can argue it's their highest charting song it's their most popular song you know 
based on the charts, but I, I think this is this is another this is another miss. I think it's there's an opportunity here for for like for something else, and it, I don't think it it didn't hit as hard as they had maybe hoped it, it would have. Right, and that kind of going into a Pink Floyd song. This was sort of from a lot of um, I guess fan views and a lot of reviews afterwards. This was not taken very well by the by the crowd. They were not into the into yeah. the Pink Floyd cover. Yeah, and you hear like I was listening for it too because I I gone back and read a review that that said the same thing, and I'll I'll quote it in just a second. But you hear like some clapping during Mother, but not nearly as loud as like a Better Man was or you know some of the earlier stuff in the set. But the yeah, the quote was, you know, I read, go back and read the review from from the day after, a couple of days after, and the uh, the writer says that this was mother was the low light of the show. It says, "quote the the irony of playing a song about war in a country that has no army wasn't lost on more than a few people in the crowd," which is like, were they just like confused? Were they like? angry like i it was hard to tell but again mothers like again 2011 they were playing it a lot they played it on jimmy fallon and it was kind of like again the song that just doesn't really connect like if you're going to do pink floyd do interstellar overdrive do comfortably numb do uh a couple other ones that they've done but mothers yeah like this one it has that line about you know do you trust the government but you never know how that's going to play in Costa Rica. Like the the mm. situation's different there. That it it didn't get the same kind of reaction that that usually does in in the U.S. or in you know Europe or somewhere where that's a little more common of a sentiment. But it's it's just hard to it's hard to gauge because we're you know we don't know that much about it. And I'm sure they didn't know that much about it. You know, going into it, so just a weird choice. And I thought again, it it just fell flat. Right, and they don't address any of the politics at the show, which is yeah. kind of rare. You know, usually when they go places, they're like, "Oh, so how about how about your leader, and how about this, and how about that?" Like they they kind of make themselves feel like home a little bit. And outside of mentioning surfing at the end, I, it's this could have been anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a, that's another the Spanish, thing just, but again, like right, yeah, and that was only that. very little, right? right. So. Uh, you do get the end of the set. Uh, you know, how are you going to end the set? Well, you did, what, six six songs from the album early, so you might as well do two more. You get Once and Alive, two pieces of the Mama Son right here. Once feels really labored to me. Um, going back to Ed just not having the best night for his voice, I think there were a lot of moments where he was just, just trying to exhaust his screams, and, and it just doesn't work he's relying on the crowd to back him up a little bit and that's just not really working either and um he's waited to some bread and butter which is fine but it's not there are some moments where bread and butter is kind of called for and expected i would think this is more yeah it's expected but it's not like the pivotal moment of the show it doesn't feel like it's powerful and important because it didn't put kind of a statement and a stamp on the night. Yeah. And again, I think once is the, is the same thing. And, and you, the, these encores are really interesting because you can kind of compare them side by side. Cause they're the, the same amount of songs. You can kind of say just breathe and last kiss are doing the same thing. Oceans and mother are doing the same thing. You hope that evolution and once are going to be doing the same thing where they're going to hit that crowd and get them going after kind of a couple more of quieter songs. But again, it, there's kind of a letdown, I think, after Mother, and I think once maybe suffered from them just not maybe getting that that big interaction and big reaction that they were counting on. And yeah, I mean, Alive is is great. You get you get the War Pigs, and again, but I hey, think we're back you, on that. Yeah, you, but you mentioned the Mama Sign. I think this is a missed opportunity. It would have been really cool. Like, how cool would it have been to get Once Alive footsteps at the end here? Yep that that would have been that would have been something really nice. It would have made this set stand out, but no footsteps so yeah right it's just kind of it, it's it's par for the core it's it's it, it's it's middling you know it, it doesn't really it doesn't really have a definition yeah bread and butter is is good like like last week it's good because it's kind of your your stamp on the night it, it makes a statement on the night and it feels like these songs are sort of an achievement 
that you've unlocked with you know your whole entire time just just sweating out the big stuff and and the hits and all that but it, for this it's just like okay this is this is another pearl jam show that we're closing and this is just how we do it yeah there's a difference yeah but I, it's, it's it's safe like you mentioned before that that's yeah. that's a good it's a good adjective to describe this it's, no matter how the rest of the night went they know that ending with these three songs is going to be great yeah and and look i think you get some moments from it i thought i thought boom was had a really good moment kind of in between one of those transitions uh, from verse chorus, or he gets a uh, solo. Yeah, he gets a solo. Roll. Right, yeah. it's really good. Uh, we get another sto- stone solo, which is becoming one of the highlights from these versions of Rockin'. So, yeah, maybe maybe the song can get a little bit redundant, but you know, I, like it still sounds good. It's just you're not you're not really excited to get it sometimes when the rest of the set doesn't kind of call for it, but. I think there is a special guest on this. Some some spawn of uh, the uh, the drummer there. Yeah, I don't know how old he is at the time. He must be real young. He must be like 11, 12 years old. I was gonna, I was gonna say 12 maybe because wasn't it 2000? He was a baby. Oh, okay. So yeah, this right 2011. So yeah, it, it would be right around. There. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, and little little Ray Cameron action. Ray Cameron. He shows up and, and shows in the future too. And uh, I, they were bringing the families along. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's been doing. Has he kind of like is is he in a band? Is he in a project? Like is he? That's interesting because there you heard there's the super group with like Slash's kid. Yeah. And like I did hear that? Could, they they didn't call Ray Cameron like get get him in on that. That would have been awesome. Yeah. Who are the other? So it's it's Slash's kid. It's um. But Metallica, the new oh, basis from Metallica. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Scott Weiland's kid. Scott Weiland, that's right. Yeah. That yeah. one threw me for a loop. I'm like, whoa, Scott Scott Weiland has a kid? I, that's I did not think that we would be talking about that in the show, but yeah. here we are. Yeah, here we are. Right. When, when, in, when in Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and again, Ed says, you know, and in, in we're going to get to Ledbetter. He says, you know, we'll be back in another year, just more empty promises. No, I heard that before. Yeah. But uh, a, a great Little Wing, too, to end. Like, Mike goes off on, on Little Wing, which is always cool. So, did you feel, yeah, nice way to end it. Did you feel like in that that part where, you know, the drums are about to kick in, did did you feel like that was about to come? And were you disappointed that it didn't? Because I was I was ready for it. I was like, all right, bring it oh, on. Like let's, a, let's get Little Wing. Like a full Little Wing. Yeah. yeah. No. I, 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 I didn't. Honestly, I, I was more just just happy to have the little bit that we got. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I, I kind of – because it just – it felt like it was building to something. Then it just it just slipped by, and, and Mike kind of goes back into, you know, the little Ledbetter reprise there. And it was great. Like, it's a great little tag. But, you know, little things like that that they could have – added as a bonus they don't do little wing as a full song a lot like that could have added to the mystique of this show and uh you know just opportunities that that weren't capitalized on but you know they yeah, finish off yeah. on a high high note ole chance and the crowd is digging it and ed says they're cashing waves tomorrow after introducing everybody so you know if they're happy that that's that's the most important part we got the 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 right people are uh, are in the right mindset here so Let's let's do what we usually do and and go back and talk about our favorite moments. Would uh, pick three from this show that you like, John? Yeah, this was. I mean, we we've been doing these shows that have had so many. This one was a little harder to to pick from. But I'm gonna go. I've got three pairs of songs that I think worked really well together that that I feel pretty confident about. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about three pairs of songs. Number three. I thought uh, "Just Breathe" and "Oceans," like I mentioned, complemented each other really well. You get the really, the really sweet sp- speech about holding hands in front of "Just Breathe." I thought was really cool, and "Oceans" I think is is was a really good good call. Like you get a lot of ten songs here, but "Oceans" was one that I, I don't think I don't think was out of place. I think it was it was nice there. So that's my number three. Number two, the very beginning, "Go into Animal," thought was just fantastic at the very beginning. Just blow these people out of the water right away. Too bad it didn't hold up. And my number one is like that that daughter into Why Go transition. 
they're going from the the red rain tag into the little great call and response and then right into why go just really made me stand up and pay attention i thought that was the that was the number one moment from this i can't think of anything else that stands out above those moments maybe better man but better man is is even so kind of pedestrian like i'm just trying to think of when people would think back to the show what would be the moments from this and i think you hit them like Oceans and the Encore is pretty important. I, I would go with that. Opening the show with, with going animal, like that's a pretty big moment. And then, you know, something that you really don't get, this sort of uh, seamless transition from daughter into why go with the chanting and everything like that. That was, that was that crowd's moment. That was that moment to shine where they were able to, to kind of show what they can do. And I wish that they were able to do it throughout the whole entire show. And it, it just wasn't there, unfortunately. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't, I, there were moments that were fine, like UR was a good performance, and um, Small Town was pretty good. Uh, there, there were moments that were fine, but not, not ones that you would cherry pick from this. If you're making a big playlist of your favorite 2011 performances, there, there are very few to take from this one. Right. Right. Okay, so that kind of will bring us into what might be a controversially low rating so you know we don't give a lot of low ratings on this show uh, i'm not going to go too bad but i want to see what you're doing how are we going to rate it and i feel yeah. bad because we usually yeah. don't go below seven almost ever yeah and, and, and like you mentioned you're talking about you know if you're going to make a playlist or something like that's a lot of that is, is a big part of my rating is you know will does it have something that i'll go back to like, does it have something that I'll take a song and, like, put it on my phone so I can listen to it, you know, over and over again, you know? This one for me is a five. Like, it just, it didn't really, didn't really hit me. It didn't really stand out. And like, we've, we've mentioned a hundred times, it was fine. So it, it gets, it gets a five for me. Just something, something for the hardcore fan. If you're, if you're a super completist and you, you want to listen to this, or if you, if you really, like I said before, if you really love 10 and Backspacer and you feel like, you want you want a show where those are highlighted then then this might be one for you but yeah for me just just five yeah i'm right there with you i have it at a five and a half um i'm giving that little half point bump because i do think that the daughter why go transition was a pretty cool moment so i will give that the benefit of the doubt but really there's not there's not a lot of things to cherry pick off of this they're just there just isn't and um you know the band hasn't been back there they've done three other kind of uh ventures down to that region down to south america or mexico and uh they've they've skipped costa rica and all three of them so so this uh, is now the officially lowest rated show that the podcast has ever covered is that true i believe so ten Mm. and a half i think is the lowest we've ever total scored a show before so Sorry, Costa Rica. No offense, but you know we we got to go on what we have. I thought that there was a show you gave a four. Wasn't there like Burn, I think total, Switzerland? I think total rating. This might be the lowest. Ah, oh, all right. We're gonna we're gonna have to see about that because I know that the Burn show from two thousand six. Neither of us were very very high on that. I think we both gave it pretty low ratings, so we'll, we'll have to see. But yeah, this is this is definitely towards the lower side of the spectrum on that list, unfortunately. So we, you know, we do it because we want to give every show its due and kind of give you all sides of the history of this band. And, and yeah, maybe there were as, as many great moments, you know, if there are nine out of 10 and their moments are great moments, there's one that might just kind of fall a little bit flat like this. So, oh, you know what? I'm it looking up and everybody. you, you are correct. Burn was a total of nine. Oh. So this is now the second lowest. I stand corrected. This is now the second lowest show the podcast has ever covered. Wow. Burn, you still have the record, Burn. Trust me, this is not something we're trying to achieve. We're not looking right. for right. the show that can get the lowest. We, like, we just go on what we have. Granted, like nothing can kind of beat when we have three people on and can all give it tens. Uh, and that does happen from time to time. But, uh, you know. This is this is not something that we're we're looking to achieve ever. If you want to listen to John and I a little bit more, you have that opportunity this week. On Thursday, 
there is going to be an episode of the show Deprogrammed. You should subscribe to Deprogrammed on Apple, Spotify, wherever you like to subscribe to podcasts because they are a very cool music-related show. John can explain what the premise of the show is. It's basically a music game show for people uh, that want to listen and kind of see where they sort of rank either their favorite band or a band that you might not have ever listened to before what your starter kit for that band should be. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. And, you know, we, we've been lucky enough to been guest on it. It's, it's run by a guy named Justin out of Virginia, and he does a great job. They, they do so many genres. They mix it up every week. Every week there's a, there's a different band, and they, you, you try to pick 10 songs that you feel is a good like introduction or starter kit for that band. So if, you're, if you want to get into a band or if you've never heard of a band, you can go pick those 10 songs and, and see if you like them. That's a, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting concept, and I love, I love being on it. You know, you've been on it a few times, so, and we had the opportunity to, uh, to be on together this week. We're going to be talking about uh, Sleater Kinney. Which uh, which Pearl Jam fans are are some somewhat familiar with, and I and I won't give away what the uh, <laughs> what the main what it's the main takeaway is, but it it you know you'll have to listen in to see uh, to see how our uh, our conversation goes as far as one song that some of you might be familiar with. I won't I won't say anything more than that, but g- <laughs> give it a listen and uh, and let show. us know. Yeah, we will address it on next week's show for sure. Yeah, definitely give them a follow, give them a listen, and uh, we are actually going to do a little bit of a crossover with them at the end of the month in December before yeah. the yeah. holidays. We're going to be doing our own little deprogrammed with Pearl Jam. A while ago, they did a Pearl Jam episode themselves, and uh, you know we we had something set for earlier this year. Uh, it was going to be really good, uh, but unfortunately, because of the circumstances that happened, that uh, that we were going to be able to do this episode, it, it wasn't going to be able to take place. So now we kind of came up with this new idea, and this is sort of John's uh, Frankenstein that he's created here. He's created a monster uh, called Mega or Ultimo de- Deprogrammed, whatever you want to call it. So explain I guess what we're doing with, with, with Pearl Jam songs at the end of the month with this. Yeah. So when they, when they covered Pearl Jam, they, they didn't do the whole discography. So I always, you know, when was thinking about that, like, Oh, it'd be an interesting opportunity to go back and do the whole catalog because, you know, 11 albums, 12, if you count lost dogs is just a lot for, for them to do in one episode. It's a lot of listening to do, and you're going to, you're going to miss out on some good ones. So, We've we've broken it into groups, and we're gonna do kind of like a tournament, almost like a like a deprogrammed tournament. So if you're if you're not familiar with the show, it'll be a good chance to 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 get familiar with it and to kind of see how it goes. And we're actually gonna have uh, Justin, the host, come on and, and host us. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It it, it could get contentious, as as some of those do. Uh, they do, yes, they do get contentious. But remember, it's 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 just Pearl Jam, and and really, it's gonna be about our own fandoms and nothing else. It's not going to be like, okay, where would you put this song in the pantheon of, of the history? No, it's, it's going to be, you know, five or six fans that are sharing their personal, personal fandom. So if, if somebody really feels like push me, pull me should be in their top 10, then yeah, it, it, it's going to be there because it, it's how they feel. So uh, you're going to hear voices that we've introduced to, to you on the show before, and you're going to hear voices that we haven't introduced to you before. It's going to be a nice little um, mix, mix up of, of, uh, of, of people from the Live on Four Legs universe and from the Deep Program universe. So looking forward to that. That's happening at the end of December. We're still at the middle of December, though. We, we, gotta, we got a couple more episodes to take care of there. And uh, next week, we're going to be doing Mexico City as we're running up North America now. We only got two in North America. Mexico City from 2003. It's going to be a night three show. That was a whole lot of fun. And then this is how we're going to end around the world. We're going to cap it off with Toronto 2016 we're gonna do the binaural show that's a great way to cap it off you guys absolutely absolutely. and for that one like feel free to write into us if you were at that show and have some good memories for that like maybe we'll do something kind of cool with that one like we did with uh with some past episodes so uh yeah i'm i'm looking forward to it you know 2020 was was an interesting year but we we did our best to kind of keep 
our side up together and, and keep the show running for you guys. And, and hopefully we've, we've done just that. And, uh, you know, 2021, we got a lot of surprises in store for that one too. So, uh, can't wait to put it all out there and, uh, you know, not much time left in this year. So we got to get a couple more out to you and, uh, and by January, we'll we'll start to really kind of get knee deep into some things that we haven't talked about before. Excited for that, and uh, that's how we'll end the show for today. So this may be the end. We're here, but not for much longer. Although we may be parting ways, I miss you already, and I miss you always. For the only first and last time that they played in Costa Rica, we'll be back next week for Mexico City. Surf's up. <laughs>